Sustainable Seas and Framing of Blue Economy in Aotearoa uh, is going to be presented by our next presenter, uh, Nick Lewis. Nick uh, is a geographer and associate professor in the School of Environment at the University of Auckland. His research examines uh, the nature of the economy and focuses attention on how economies take shape. As well as leading the Sustainable Seas Blue Economy uh, theme and researching the conditions unnecessary to achieve a distinctive blue economy, uh, he also researches the roles of management consultancies in shaping economies, uh, economic futures, and is widely published uh, on the marketisation of universities. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Lewis. Uh, kia ora uh, koutou. Yes, I am Nick Lewis, and I'm a political and economic geographer based in the School of uh, Environment at the University of Auckland. And I'm also the Blue Economy theme leader in Sustainable Seas. It's my great pleasure to introduce the Blue Economy sessions today by taking you on a quick tour of the Challenges Blue Economy journey. The aim is to familiarise you all with what we've tried to achieve, what we have done, uh, and what we are doing. Uh, I will need to hustle. I am one of those people who gets told off for speaking too long, uh, and now I've lost for three or four minutes. I thought I was going to steal. Uh, but let's go. This is moving the slides on. Green button. Ah, thank you. When the challenge started life, foes leading it knew that it must address questions of economy. The challenge objective charged it with enhancing utilisation of our marine resources within environmental and biological constraints. But we were also charged with giving effect uh, to te tiriti o waitangi, uh, being interdisciplinary and later transdisciplinary. And we were charged with disrupting business as usual in science, and thus by extension, relations between science, society and economy. We knew that the ecological underpinnings of achieving sustainable seas meant that we needed to think seriously about the meaning of enhancing utilisation. This could not be interpreted as maximising growth within limits, especially in Aotearoa at this time. We needed a marine economy reset and have been given a mandate to plot this. From these initial uh, orientations, we began to plot an economic research agenda consistent with the vision, mandate, and objective of sustainable seas. We tested the limits of established thinking and asked about current uses of resources at activity and sectoral scales, as well as how best to think that about our marine economy as an object uh, for policy and management, for something that required policy and management. This research was incorporated into a wider exploration of social values uh, and inclusive management processes, as well as asking what Tao Māori and Mataranga Māori might bring to the journey. <clears throat> and we began to plot transitions to something different and more sustainable. The Sustainable Seas Mandate gave us the opp an opportunity to bring more critical thinking uh, about economy inside the tent of, the, of real world impact. One starting point was to interpret the economy holistically as a deeply social process and set of practices that mobilize, utilize and steward resources to produce livelihoods. This of course includes investment, production, distribution, institutions, state in interventions, regulation, consumption, social valuation and much more. As high-profile political economists are increasingly arguing in public forums, and Māori have long argued, uh, often through the words of people like Jason Mika and John Reed and Maria Baj, economy is not a field of social action separated from cultural practice, governance, social concern, or environmental management. Any economy at any scale is a materialization of processes, of relations, and of practices in place and in action. Economies are an outcome of what we do and how we govern and manage activities and relations between different actors. They're not just out there awaiting description and unleashing. This approach aligns neatly with academic and policy research that tells us that sustainability uh, must be far more than simply recycling, carbon reduction, or recognition 
or recognizing limits to expansion. We need to be making, thinking about making transitions to just futures. As celebrity economist Mariana Mazzucato insists, if we govern for just futures with enough will, we could well produce them. The challenge unfolded just as the international policy and academic literature on marine futures became focused on the idea of blue economy. There was little agreement on exactly what the term meant, but those using it uh, tended to share the view that the oceans were fundamental to humanity's food, energy, and climate futures, and represented vast economic opportunities. They also agreed that the oceans were in trouble. Protecting the promise of the oceans and realizing their potential would require active transitioning to a new kind of economy, a blue economy. We were, in effect, in a blue economy moment. We began to see the blue economy as our goal, with our journey towards it guided by key Aotearoan waypoints. The blue economy moment had led our government to be interested in measuring and managing marine economy. Work was required, and important <coughs> and important and, and, and eco uh, marine economies, blue economies, were important in an island nation where coasts and oceans are crucial resources for local livelihoods and seen as central to cultural practice and national prosperity. Our oceans are a complicated form of common pool resources, with the notion of common defined in large part by titidity. We also know that titidity in effect demands the kind of understanding of economy that we were adopting, a more holistic and more integrated conception of economy, intergenerationality, and accountability to nature, and the return of economic rents to communities. Guided by these waypoints, just transitions are imaginable, possible, and even firmly on the table. There is every reason to talk meaningfully of procedural, re redistributional, recognitional uh, justice and collective control over resources and futures. That's not to say that the possibilities of such futures are fully embraced by all. For some, they are wildly radical, unwelcome, and have no part in conversation about economy. For others, they are simply unachievable. Yet many argue that we must embrace such possibilities in the face of onrushing climate change, global political instabilities, and so on. There are dangerous cognitive dissonances between entrenched practice and viewpoints, tentative steps forward by policymakers, and what is necessary and indeed possible. Navigating these dissonances has been part of our journey. Hopefully these themes will re res resonate through what the speakers on the first panel have to say about their visions of blue economy. Uh, and they will certainly resonate through some of the discussion about blue economy principles later in the day. Stick, stepping back a bit, phase one research, the concrete research of phase one, also involved more conventional sectoral analyses of marine economy. Without the difficulty, uh, with the difficult, without the difficult to measure tourism, marine economy sectors had effectively uh, co and collectively stagnated in the 10 years to 2017. With coastal tourism included, uh, however, the marine economy was actually growing and contributed up to 3% of national GDP. Coastal tourism turns out to be the biggest sector in terms of output and employment. A telling first finding in itself. Beneath the level of the sector, there were more interesting things going on especially in terms of a turn towards environmental commitments and improved environmental practice. I hope people in the audience can see themselves in the images and brand logos, uh, but we were, we were able to identify uh, adoptions of sustainable, sustainability technologies and sustainability reporting in major firms. Small-scale initiatives in ecotourism, seafood, seaweed, marine circular economy blue biotech initiatives, innovative regulatory approaches, initiatives to add value through innovation and green certification, and an interest in green investment. Much of this energy was led by Māori. Our research also highlighted the integrated holistic nature of economy. This diagram highlights the extent of who and what are at work in New Zealand's blue economy. It's indicative, it doesn't capture everything or everyone. 
The market to government to place axes are a way of thinking about and arranging the complexity and flagging the interrelationships that make up our marine economy. The model points to the many relationships to be coordinated or managed, interests to be considered, resource conflicts to be resolved, and values to be delivered. A much deeper complexity of concern that is normally understood to be a question of economy. So what did all this interpretation add up to? It pointed to three directions to realize the transitional potential that we had identified and others had helped us, well, had identified for, for us. Researchers don't really make up too much. We learn from others. The first was, was to, direction point, pointer was to a relatively open but politically helpful definition of blue economy as less a thing and more an aspiration, a challenge and an opportunity. And a definition of any materialized, i.e. on the ground, blue economy as made up of marine activities that generate economic value and contribute positively to social, cultural and ecological well-being. And by extension from this, all the sectors and relations that make those activities possible and valuable. This offers a very different object for management, if that is what government was after, than the marine economy as measured by sector level output and growth. The second was an activity-focused mapping that positions economic activities on a transitional pathway from low values and environmental, environmentally harmful activities to high value, actively restorative activities, where the investment case may be founded on redressing harms and contributing positive to, positively to social, cultural, and ecological well-being. These are the activities that we might prioritize or choose to prioritize for public investment in science, for example. The third was a tentative sector-based blue economy development model. The schematic here highlights sector-based opportunities for economically productive, low harm, or restorative economic activity in aquaculture, blue tech, and certain types of tourism. It also highlights the centrality of indigenizing national and local blue economies as a pathway to blue economy futures, as well as to greening other activities to reduce harm through new commitments, production technologies, or circular economy relationships. So the centering of indigenizing practices and institutions, I think, is a theme that hopefully will be carried right through this particular conference. Phase two of the research of the challenge involved funding research to support transitions. We funded two sets of projects, core projects and innovation fund projects. They were designed to promote a blue economy in unlikely settings, an economy that might not otherwise attract research funding or activities that might not otherwise attract, attract research funding, as well as the seaweed sector, something of a poster child for restorative ocean economy. The core projects, and there they are, were conceptualized in-house and developed and delivered by best teams. You'll hear a little more about three of these projects this afternoon, but you can see here how they were mapped onto our blue economy development model uh, of the previous slide. Unfortunately, we won't be hearing about the growing BE tourism project, yet it remains important here to recognize the centrality of tourism in our blue economy. We also put out a call for interest in smaller blue economy innovation projects and received 96 applications across a full spectrum of types of uh, project. We were able to fund eight with successful um, applicants targeting uh, zones of areas of innovation that reflected our sector and activities targets, blue tech, greening fisheries, and aquaculture and mataranga Māori driven innovation. In this way, we redefined innovation in a broader sense than just high-tech application, while reaffirming the value of technology and innovation, research and science. This included highlighting Mataranga Māori-driven innovation as part of the central thrust to indigenous, uh, indigenize our blue economy. We'll hear more about three of these projects this afternoon. The slides, of course, will be available to people to run through. 
The third phase of the program is what the challenge has labeled synthesis. This stage of the journey is designed to stimulate transitions through uptake and impact. We've initiated four sets of activities that aim to create uh, frameworks, tools, and supportive conditions for a transition to a successful blue economy. Uh, the development of a set of blue economy principles, measures to support sustainability reporting and nature positive accountability, models for place-based blue economy development, and supporting mechanisms for uh, activating commercial blue economy propositions. Again, we'll hear more about this this afternoon. Sorry, Claire and Tane, but there you go. Um, <laughs> uh, there is much more to do. Uh, but I have a vision, and many of us within the challenge share this vision, of a blue economy that is indigenized, prosperous, resilient, internationally focused, uh, and committed first and foremost to the health of the oceans, uh, and one that will be guided by, by ecosystem-based management of use and benefit that is inclusive, that is just, and that is emancipatory. As with my, uh, my colleagues, I don't believe this to be a Pollyanna-like claim. Uh, I rather think that it is something that may be realizable. Um, thank you.